This is Charlotte by Jeremy Markovich. This is a essay I wrote for Our State Magazine. It's in the August 2012 issue. Uh, Our State has kind of grappled over the years with how to handle Charlotte, what is Charlotte, um, and so they left it up to me to try to figure that out. Uh, so what I did was uh, reach back over the seven years that I've been here and try to just think about how the places and the people that I've met kind of fit together. And uh, this is a long essay, but I'm going to start uh, with the beginning of it, and it starts with how I met my wife. I used to like Amelie's French Bakery, but I fell in love with it when I fell in love there. I brought a board game in one night, and a friend showed up with a blonde, and I instantly wished I hadn't brought the game. I did my best to explain the rules. I offered her half my French press coffee, and I let my guard down because it wasn't a date. I would find out later that it was. My friend had brought Kelsey expressly for us to meet. After the game was over, I won. I sheepishly followed her into the parking lot and said that we should do this again sometime in a way that let her know I was serious. On our second date, we had our first kiss as I walked her back to her car. A few months later, I told her I loved her, and two years after that, I married her. But it all started there at the bakery, at the place where people constantly are, where they're working on something 24 hours a day, even at 3 a.m. or 3 p.m. Amelie's never closes. It's the kind of place where you can play a board game in public and nobody will give you a second glance. Clumps of people sit around tables among the two-toned light blue walls. The funky artwork hangs in even funkier frames. The people match the pictures. Fun. Different. The line seems constant in front of the display case full of caramel salted brownies, eclairs, and macaroons. Sometimes a band rehearses out in the atrium. Sometimes people are there to meet as part of their book club. And sometimes people are there just to talk over a croissant. Kelsey and I wish Amelie's were closer to our place in South Park. But then we think Amelie's couldn't exist anywhere but Noda. It has a tiny location uptown, but it's just not the same. It just wouldn't be Amelie's. So we make the drive. We go up there from time to time and look over at the table where we met and think about this place. Because in that moment, over a game, over coffee, the place became ours. And if you fall in love with Amelie's, hell, if you fall in love with Amelie's, then it becomes yours. Now maybe it's not Amelie's. Maybe it's Freedom Park. Maybe it's Price's Chicken Coop. Maybe it's your neighborhood. Maybe it's your church. When you find Charlotte, when you truly find it, you fall in love with it. I looked for Charlotte for a long time. I've ridden through this town on a bus and on a freight train and in the back of a fire engine. I've grabbed a late night meal at Landmark Diner out on Central Avenue where the night owls pile in after midnight and fill their yawning stomachs in vinyl booths. I've gone over to Plaza Midwood where the cycle of hip works more quickly. People discover a place and then simultaneously ruin it because everybody else has discovered it too. There are trees everywhere. I've driven under the leafy willow oaks planted 95 years ago. They turn Queens Road West into a series of green tunnels where runners jog and pelotons of bikers mix with cars. I don't work uptown, but I'm drawn to it. That's where the shiny things are. Here, we seem a bit like the other big cities with wide sidewalks and corporate lobbies and fountains and men in button-down shirts and women in sharp skirts. Everybody's busy. Then people head home out to the leafy neighborhoods and take off their ties and look at their yards of the trees and the fireflies and think to themselves, well, isn't this nice? Charlotte is exceedingly hard to pin down. It's a banking city. No, it's a family town. No, it's the New South. No, it's friendly. No, it's growing. Every time you try and describe it, you interrupt yourself and think of something better. Most people give up on trying to attach any one label to it, so they just say it's nice. That's what my parents and friends told me before I moved here seven years ago. Oh, Charlotte? I hear it's nice there. That creates a bit of a problem because Charlotte is a teenager about to take her next step in life where she's going to have to choose what she wants to be when she grows up. Remember that feeling you had when you finished high school? You could do anything. You could go anywhere. You could be whoever you wanted to be. You were pure potential, but every decision you made at that point in your life shaped who you would become. These decisions would define your identity whether you liked it or not, and right now, at this moment, at this point in history, that is Charlotte. We're on the verge of something. We're lucky. Some towns in North Carolina are locked into what they've been for years. There are beach towns, furniture towns, mill towns, farm towns, suburbs, mountain getaways, interstate oases, tobacco towns. When the realities of a new era force them to change, Sometimes they have a hard time doing so. Some places dry up, the stores close, the weeds grow, the people move. The heritage is so strong that it's hard to stop living in the past. People point at those towns and say, I know who you are. Not Charlotte. They say we're nice, but we know we're more than that.